it's nonsense when people tell you that cast iron stuff sticks to it. I mean, can you see that? This is not a fully seasoned pan. It's my third seasoning of this thing, right? And look at the eggs already just kind of bouncing around underneath it. Because I took um, and flattened all of this. This was very rough casting. It was made in China and they used heavy grit sand, as far as I could tell. And it was very, very rough casting in here. So what I ended up doing is I took it out into the garage and with the tip of a file, I flattened the whole thing. And then I got the brilliant idea of taking the angle grinder and I very gently, very flat, touched all of the surfaces in there, including the inside the corner. And it's amazing how smooth this thing is now. To show you guys how I was actually starting this whole process, here is, by the way, that towel is pretty dry. The paper towel. Oh, that's way too much. Oh, put too much in. So, and I spread this around. I got way too much in there. Oh, good. The dry towel is soaking up most of it. Each time you oil it is a yet another layer of non-stick being reapplied to it. Now here's the other thing that I'm really liking. I could take the spatula, I could literally scrape the thing flat. Now we have gas cooktop and I just wanted to show you how very low I've got it. So it's not quite to one. Now take a look at this one. I haven't touched this one since I flipped it, right? Have you ever seen eggs come off a pan that easily? Now what I've also discovered is that this pan is a little too small. Because when you see the spatula here, i got to really come in at a steep angle. Whereas this pan, I have more room to work with when I come down to grab something. Now look at this. The spatula and the whole egg is just floating around. No Teflon whatsoever. And Teflon isn't healthy for you anyway. That's correct. Do you want to talk about the shortening that you used in the oven? Well, as it turns out, um, I used vegetable shortening, all vegetable shortening. But I'm, I'm coming to believe that it really doesn't matter what kind of uh, shortening you use. A lot of people insist that you have to use lard. I didn't have any lard so I just used that all vegetable shortening because that's what we have on the shelf at home here. And now what I'm using is just cheap nothing special vegetable oil. And if you look on the ingredients list it's nothing but soy. So I take the infrared and I check the side of the pan and it's 270 right on the very edge. <clears throat> now this pan in the center is 603. Midway out is 483. And then right on the edge is 362. So that's pretty decent. As you can see, the center of the pan is the hottest. I watched this guy yesterday on YouTube where he took a brand new pan, a cheap Chinese pan, right? And he put it down on a super hot electric oven uh, on the coils. And after just a few minutes, the pan bowed out. So instead of being nice and flat, the pan bowed out like this. And it was more like a salad bowl. The whole thing was just rocking all over the place. So he proved to me in that video that if you overheat these pans, they will bow. I mean, they're cast iron, they're big, heavy, and strong, but it's just metallurgy. It's going to bow. 
And even the <coughs> Teflon ones bow. Oh, the Teflon ones bow very much. As you can see. Now this one's going to the garage junk pile here in just a few minutes. As you can see, it's literally, no matter where you push on this pan, it just rocks around. And it makes it for very difficult uh, frying anything or doing anything with this pan because everything sinks to the middle. It wants to pool in the center right here. And this is one of the old traditional Teflon pans. And it was not a cheap pan. I mean, we spent good money on this pan. I noticed yesterday when we were seasoning all of these cast iron pots and pans in the oven, it really causes the house to kind of stink, it puts a lot of stink into the house. So when I'm, I got the edges, I got the outsides on all of this stuff, and now on the cooktop is where I'm going to try and season the actual working surface of the pan. Now this pan, uh, correction, this is the only pan that I took the angle grinder to. And the results are promising, very, very promising thus far. In fact, you guys saw it. The egg was sliding around real nicely. And the center of the pan is turning nice and black like this pan already is. This pan and all the rest of the pots and pans, I did not grind down. So I just started seasoning over and over and over again, right? Uh, and on this pan over here is where I decided, because it was... The casting on these Chinese pans is so very rough <laughs> that I just felt that I, I had to knock it down. Now, it was so rough that when I took the spatula and I literally just tried doing this with a spatula, nothing more than that, I couldn't. It kept snagging. It was kind of like having these tiny little nail heads, uh, tips of nails sticking up from the bottom of the pan. So I decided I was going to take it out to the garage and with the edge of a file I was going to knock down just the high spots. Well, <laughs> when I got going on that whole project, I decided uh, cure after cure after cure that I was going to take an angle grinder and I'm really, really glad I did because this pan now is glass smooth on the bottom. As you can see, and I'm pushing pretty hard, you can see the spatula flexing, it's not snagging anywhere. So, as one of the other folks on YouTube mentioned, I really think that the difference between a modern, decent name brand, such as this, Lodge, in fact, it's the only popular brand that I was able to find in the store, and this is good quality. Uh, apparently, they use finer sand because the roughness of the surface is far smoother than this cheap Chinese uh, pan that I've got right there. And just to show you what I'm working with here, it's called Stan Sport. Or I don't know if it's Stan Sport or Stan's Port. So who knows? But the casting on this thing is so very rough. Now these Chinese guys must have been using much coarser sand in order to make their cast iron. And it makes for a very, very rough surface. So, it takes more seasoning. But, having learned what I've learned here, I think that even these cheap Chinese castings, with enough time, you could eventually fill in all the valleys and knock down some of the peaks and season the pan into a workable solution, but it's going to take a lot of a lot of cook time on the cooktop. Or if you have an angle grinder, uh, this pan literally took me about 12 minutes to do with an angle grinder. And when I was using the angle grinder, the most difficult part about the angle grinder on this pan was to set the spinning disc down as gently as possible because the disc, and I was using a very thin, I think it's a 1 8 inch cutoff disc. <coughs> that disc was so aggressive, if I just laid it down, it would cut. It would cut into the pan really hard. 
So my whole big trick was to try and get that disc not at an angle to the pan, but as, as shallow an angle as possible and as acute an angle as possible to come in and very lightly just touch the surface. Just touch it and go, touch it and go, touch it and go. And like I said, it took me 12 minutes to do this whole thing. And I am really impressed with the results. I'm very, very happy with the results. And that big glob of oil that I put in here, largely almost completely cooked off again. So, it is seasoning right here on the cooktop. It's slow. But actually, this may be a faster method than using the oven because when I have it in the oven, I can only get one layer of oil on there and then I gotta raise the temperature all the way by the way when I get it up to 400 the entire house is saturated with the smell when I got it down to 350 it was manageable when I took it down to 300 degrees it just seems like hours and hours are passing and not much was happening at 300 so somewhere between 350 and 400 400 being smoking the house or None of the smoke detectors went off, but it seemed to me like they were close. And 350 is where I ended up leaving all of these things last night. But I'm telling you, right here on the cooktop, I'm very impressed with the results just setting it on the fire right here. I guess if I weren't uh, talking on camera, I would be moving the pan over in one direction try and get a better heat dispersion. Are the pots sloshing at all or are they holding steady? You mean rocking? Yeah. Nice and flat. And as everyone has mentioned previously that I was watching on YouTube yesterday, never ever wash these things with soap and water. Just take a dry paper towel when you're done with it and literally just wipe it down with a dry paper towel. By the way, the lodge says that it comes pre-seasoned at the store. I tried. I put a fried egg on it and I put a little bit of light oil on it and it was thick. And as you can see, as you guys saw just a few moments ago, when I put the eggs on these after I seasoned, re-seasoned multiple times again, the egg literally the whole thing just slides around. And anybody who spent any amount of time in the kitchen or around a cooktop, knows that eggs are one of the most sticky substances in the kitchen. It's incredible. If the egg won't stick, then I'm pretty sure that fried anything else that you might put on a pan won't stick either. To give you an idea of what I was talking about, how rough these pans were, now this is the stains board. And if you look at the handle here, and if you look at the castings in here, you can see the casting, I think they're called casting flashing and the roughness of the handle they're using a very kind of a coarse sand and you could see i didn't touch it with the angle grinder here at all and right here also i did not touch with the angle grinder now i did file the edges a little bit because there's a lot of that flashing there so i just took a hand file and these two divots one right here i did not touch with the angle grinder and this one right here, I did not touch with the angle grinder. And those guys are really, really rough. Whereas the rest of the pan, the flat bottom, as well as the sides, I did do with the angle grinder. And now this pan is the smoothest, flattest pan that we have. Now, let's compare that rough casting to this casting. This pan has been completely untouched, unaltered, from the store. This is a lodge and apparently they use much much finer sand, green sand in their castings because as you can see it is really smooth, very smooth and even their handle, take a look at their handle, their handle is very smooth and the inside castings are very um, smooth meaning there's not much uh, casting flash I think is what they call it and when I did the whole spatula scratch scratch test it never snagged not one section of it snagged now you can hear the difference between this pan 
The edges, by the way, are... Oh, there's a snag. There's a snag right there. So there's a piece of metal right there that's causing the spatula to snag. So there's one. Okay. And now listen to this pan. So even the higher quality American made Lodge pan is not as smooth as this one after I took the angle grinder to it.